Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We are going to continue our antibiotic lecture. We did like so many lectures in the past, looked at the cephalosporin. Today, another important topic, which is glycopeptides, okay? Now, when we talk about, uh, I mean, before we talk, my name is Dr. Pramil Charyat. I'm a practicing physician, program director, internal medicine, transitional residency, and associate professor of medicine to a large medical school in the United States. Let's get into our topic again. We're going to look at the class of antibiotic called glycopeptides today. Okay, when you talk about glycopeptide, the main thing, the only thing we need to know about vancomycin, right? <laughs> very, very important drug all across the United States, save millions of people's of life, okay? Very expensive drug. Now, we look at, again, it's a glycoprotein, a glycobian tumor, and then it's a peptide. The first thing we need to look at is the mechanism of action. How does it work? So let's look at our mechanism of action. What does vancomycin do? How does it act, okay? Bacteria guess, have this D-alanine, D-alanine terminus, of, at the pentapeptide, that's the last terminal portion. So, vancomycin combined with this D alanine and D alanine, and they form this five hydrogen bonds with the, penta, with the peptide backbone of the glycopeptide. Okay, so what does it do? It prevents transpeptidation, which is important for peptidoglycan, which is an important part of the cell wall of the bacteria. Okay. Very, very important to know the mechanism of action because the examination purpose, they will ask you that. Now, is there any, next thing we have to look at is the resistance. Of course, there's a resistance are developing. The main thing we need to know about vancomycin, VRE, vancomycin resistant endrococci. So how does this resistance develop? The resistance, the bacteria develop this resistance by alternation. alteration. Instead of this D-alanine, D-alanine, they target and they make it D-alanine and lactate and D-alanine and serine. And those alterations kind of help the bacteria to survive the attack from vancomycin. Okay, again, a board question is going to be on the mechanism of action and the resistance. Now, uh, next thing we have to look at is the uh, spectrum of coverage. The first thing we need to know is all mainly gram-positive or only gram-positive. Don't even think about it, anything else. Why not gram-negative? Because this is very bulky uh, vancomycin and it cannot go through the pores or the channels in the gram-negative uh, cell membrane. Okay, so that's very, very important. So when you talk about gram-positive coverage, only gram-positive coverage, what we need to know is very important, methylene-resistant staph aureus, MRSA. Very good, okay? Now, what are the other gram-positive? Staph epidermis, streptococcus, pyogenes, viridians group, streptococci, strep pneumonia, and some enterococci. Okay? Now, again, remember, no gram-negative coverage. When you look at the anaerobe, it covers clostridium and other gram-positive anaerobes, but not gram-negative co coverage. It is, a, I mean, we use for clostridium infection, that's when we give oral medication, okay? Remember that. Now, let's look at the dose. Usually what do we do, everything, if the kidney function, everything is normal, what's the normal dose? You can give one gram every 12 hours, but do it very slowly, maybe like in the 60-minute infusion, remember that. Okay, now we can do oral only one situation because you want to treat Clostridium difficile colitis because you want to take this drug and the drug goes into the colon and then kill the bacteria. Okay, so what is the oral dose in that? 125 milligram four times a day. Okay, that's only because it's not systemically absorbed. It just kind of go, I mean, it's going, when you take it, it go through the colon and kill the bacteria. So you, you need to give that oral in C. difficile infections, my friend. Now, so you, there is, I mean, it's also very important to check the serum therapeutic level or serum trough level of vancomycin. Okay, so when do you check the serum? Before the fourth dose, you order a serum trough level. You want it to keep around 10 microgram per ml. 
that's okay for normal situation. Let's say if you have a big or really bad sepsis, then you keep it a little uh, higher. What level? 15 to 20. But don't go greater than 20. When you go greater than 20, that's where the complications can happen and the patients can have like kidney failure, a lot of target organ problems, so don't do that, okay? Now, what are the adverse effects? Red man syndrome, okay? Vancomycin can cause red man syndrome. It is not an allergic reaction. What is it? It's a direct effect on the mast cells which increase the histamine, okay? So it's not an allergic reaction. Board is, or you know, if I'm writing an examination question, they're going to ask that. So direct effect on the mast cells and increase histamine. And how do you treat it? You can give histamine blocker and the patient gets better. Sometimes you can like, you know, preemptively give um, histamine blocker before you start. That should also help. Now, what are the nephrotoxicity? Again, it can cause renal failure. So you have to be careful, like it's really excreted, so you have to know the dose. If the creatinine clearance is like 50 to 90, you get 15 to 20 milligram per kg every 12 hours. If the creatinine clearance is 15 to 50, you give 10 to 15 milligram, you make it every 24 hours. Let's say you have really bad kidney, creatinine clearance less than 15, you give 10, 15 milligram per kg, but do it like 48 or 72 hours longer time, okay? So one last thing is the ototoxicity. It can cause like permanent ear, ear, hearing loss, but only like very high doses or in like renal failure situations. So let's take a sense, step back and kind of look at our <clears throat> uh, diagram right here. Vangomycin belong to what? Glycopeptides, remember that, glycopeptides. How does it act? Remember D-alanine, D-alanine, terminal part, vancomycin combined it, and then create the five hydrogen bond with the peptide backbone of the glycopeptide, and then it prevented transpeptidation affecting the, um, <clears throat> affecting the cell wall. Now resistant, how does it develop resistance? Also we need to know, very important, vancomycin resistant enterococci infection. So the bacteria make some changes. Instead of the D-alanine, D-alanine, they make it to D-alanine, D-lactate, or D-alanine, D-serine, okay? So that's the way it works. Then we look at the uh, spectrum of activities. Again, only gram-positive, MRSA is the thing to go. Why not gram-negative? Because it's too big and it cannot go through the pores, okay? Anaerobic coverage, only gram-positive anaerobic coverage, clostridium, it can be treated. And the dose, think about the renal dosing. Think about when do we give oral. Usually given only IV. Only time we give oral is when there is a clostridium difficile infection with the colitis. Remember that. Okay. And then don't forget the red man syndrome is not an allergic reaction. Okay. Sometimes board is going to ask question. Nephrotoxicity, think about the dose in the situation, think about autotoxicity. So the main thing to remember, remember the mechanism of action, look at the resistance, uh, read about red man syndrome, and remember only gram positive. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation. God bless.